Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech. And as we get closer and closer to September, we're going to start hearing more and more about upcoming Apple events. So we'll talk about that as well as iPhone 13, iOS 15, beta 6, and more. This is your news update for the week of August 15th, 2021. Now, the first thing is if you're using iCloud, but maybe you're using it on a Windows computer, there's an updated version for you now. It's version 12.5 and it has a new password manager app. So you can access and manage passwords and it also works with Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. So that's now available if you're on Windows. Now, the next thing has to do with Apple Watch. And pretty soon we should see a new option for workouts. Now, currently, if you're using an Apple Watch and you're using workouts, you'll have the option for time to walk. According to Mark Gurman, we're going to have time to run coming very soon, whether that be in a new Watch OS 7 update along with iOS 14.8 or something along those lines, or with an iOS 15 version version in watch OS eight. We're not sure, but it looks like they're going to have time to run as well. And these are just where someone's talking to you while you do this. So you can go to time to run or time to walk currently, and you'll have different episodes with different people where you can just listen for about a half an hour or so as to what they have to say. So that's something that hopefully we'll see very, very soon. Now, quite a few people using a Mac were having an issue where it would give them an error if they were trying to use a scanner, saying you don't have permission to open the application. In a recent support document, Apple has said that the issue will be resolved in a future software update. And whether or not that's Mac OS Big Sur or Mac OS Monterey, they haven't said, but they have given a workaround for that. So I'll link that document in the description. Now, with Apple's upcoming CSAM photo detection and messages update, it's caused quite a bit of confusion and a little bit of anger anger as well. So Craig Federighi, the head of Apple software has tried to address this in a video with the wall street journal. I'll link this in the description, but this is a, an, interview that I would recommend taking a look at if you want to know more about it. It explains how it works even better straight from the people that developed it themselves, as well as messages in those updates. So I definitely urge you to take a look at that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments as it's still controversial, even after watching that, but definitely worth getting more information about it. Now there's new legislation in the European union that could finally force Apple to switch from lightning to USB C. Now this is something a lot of people, including myself have wanted to have USB C not only on iPhone, but Mac and iPad and everything else. I would love to see that switch, but right now with the iPhone, it still has lightning and Apple has its good reasons for that. And of course, a lot of accessories in the past work with that. However, a switch to USB C may be very soon if Apple just doesn't remove the port altogether due to some new legislation that the European union is looking at. So before they combated some of that by just including an adapter in the box that went from lightning to USB C, but they may force it altogether in those countries. So we may or may not see that we won't see that this year with the upcoming iPhones, but we could see it next year if they continue to push through that sort of legislation. Now, according to Mark Gurman, there could be as many as three Apple events this fall or autumn. And this is not unlike what we had last year. We had multiple events, but the first one this time around would be for the next iPhone. So we could see that in early to mid September where they introduce the next version of the iPhone. So it will have a slight redesign. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but this is just sort of a demo unit or a dummy unit that's non-functioning. So we could have that. We could also have new Apple watch series sevens launching with a slight redesign. I've talked about that again in the past a little bit, maybe a little bit of a chipset internal update as well, along with updated AirPods three. So that might look a little bit more like the AirPods pro, but with out the similar tip that we have now and no noise canceling, but they could offer additional features that we're just not aware of. So that would be the first event. And that would be in mid September or maybe early September. The next event would be sometime probably in late September or October where we would see iPads. It would be an iPad focused event along with services, and we could see a fifth generation iPad air. Some people have said to expect it. Some have said not to, but with the fourth generation that I have here, you we got the more squared off edges. We have touch ID, which works really well. You just put your finger on it. It unlocks quickly and it's more of an iPad pro mini or, or a iPad pro light that has less 
overall specs, but pretty good overall. The next iPad Air is said to have an additional camera, but not much difference anywhere else. However, we are waiting for an updated iPad mini, and that's said to be included with this event most likely. Whether or not it will be redesigned, we have conflicting rumors, but many people are saying we'll have a redesign similar to the Air, where everything's sort of getting squared off to match the iPhones, but we may or may not have that, but we will have updated internals and hopefully some better displays and maybe additional features as well with that mini. Now with the last and third event, that would be a Mac event where we would get our new Apple Silicon Macs with a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. And that's said to be in late October or November. And we're expecting those Macs sometime by November. So that seems to make the most sense. Apple's getting that production done now. They're already in production and we'll see those new iPads, Macs, in iPhones sometime in the autumn. So all of those events are coming soon. I can't wait for the first one where we'll see the iPhones and those upcoming iPhones. I've talked quite a bit about before and they look somewhat like this, not exactly, but they'll look similar to this with the regular models, the iPhone 13 and 13 mini having a diagonal camera layout and then an updated cameras in the pro and pro max models with 120 Hertz displays, a smaller notch, larger batteries, updated cameras, better 5g and and similar pricing. All of those are coming very soon. And then also for 2022, the iPhones are said to have new three nanometer chipsets, according to DigiTimes. So the 2022 iPhone could be a big leap as far as power consumption, since the chipset would shrink even further and even make room for additional battery life as well. So we should get increased battery life this year and maybe even more the following year. But according to DigiTimes, TSMC, who makes Apple Silicon and a lot of the, their chips, is set to move to mass production of those chips in the second half of 2022. So we could see that according to DigiTimes. Now, when it comes to upcoming versions of iOS, many expect Apple to release an iOS 14.8 update. We don't exactly know when, since Apple is still working on it, but it's been found in some databases of Xcode. So it seems like we may have that very soon. Whether or not we have beta versions is hard to say. Some people have said that 14.8 will let you keep it and then just install security updates. We really know nothing about iOS 14.8 as Apple has said nothing and no rumors or leaks have really come out about it. So all of it's basically speculation until we get some credible sources, but we can expect at least 14.8. Usually when they show up in databases like that, we do have some sort of release. So we could expect that this week or next week, or it's possible they could scrap it, but I think they'll definitely be having another version of iOS 14 at some point. Then we move on to iOS 15 in September. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, when is iOS 15 beta six? And it looks like now that we're in August, it could be as soon as tomorrow. Some people have said next week, but generally when we're in August, we go to weekly schedules where we'll have one this week. Then next week we'll get to the release candidate very soon. And then we'll have a final release after that, usually in mid September to late September. That's generally the trend every year, unless they decide to push it a little bit further back. We could see that, but usually around the time of an iPhone 13 launch, we'll get iOS 15 or the next version of iOS. So I would expect iOS 15 beta six tomorrow at the soonest that, or maybe Wednesday, and then we'll see one every week until the final launch. And then it could be just a few weeks out at that point. I look forward to it. Of course, this could change. Apple has been very random about this lately, but it seems to be very reasonable based off what we've had in the past. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, the thing I'm looking most forward to is new Macs. Since I edit on them every single day, making these sorts of videos, I'm looking forward to a 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. And like I said earlier, Mark Gurman is saying that they're going to launch by November. Now, whether that means October and they'll be out by November is hard to say, but they're expected to ship with mini LEDs and those were delayed a little bit. Many expected that to launch sometime in June, but it looks like the displays similar to what we have on the iPad pro will be coming soon with the next MacBook. So I really can't wait for a 16 inch MacBook pro with an M one X chipset inside. That's what I'm looking most forward to. Also, according to Ming Chi Kuo, the redesigned MacBook Air, which we got a newer one last year with M1, but we don't have a redesign. There should be a redesign with multiple colors. I've talked about quite a bit in the past. According to Ming Chi Kuo, should launch in mid 22 with all of those different color options.
And then finally, according to the ELEC, Samsung is preparing new displays for the 2022 MacBook Pro models that are said to be OLED. Now, this does not make a whole lot of sense to me because they're pushing pretty hard on mini LED. In fact, mini LED can do much brighter backgrounds generally or much brighter lighting than what you get with OLED in general. And while it's not as good as OLED in some ways, it's better in other ways. If they're making such a big push for mini LED, I'd be very surprised if they switch to OLED unless they're going to offer it as a different option. That's possible, but we've never seen Apple sort of do multiple displays before like that, other than the OLED that we have in the iPhone and then on the iPad with mini LED or regular LED. So it's possible we could see that, but I wouldn't say it's likely based on what we've had before. And so that's everything for this past week. There's been quite a bit of news, a lot around those upcoming Apple events. I think that's what many people are most excited about to see what Apple's got next as far as iPads and iPhones and MacBooks and more. Also, we're looking for a new Mac mini, maybe a pro version and an updated Mac pro as well. So hopefully we'll see all of those things this year. Although some people have said we won't see those and all of them until next year. Apple has two years total to get that done according to the goal they've set. And that's what they did when they switched from IBM's power PC architecture to Intel. Now switching from Intel to Apple Silicon should take about two years total. So they still have time to do that. So that's everything. Let me know what you're most excited for in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.